I am very, very excited to talk to James Hawkins today, who is a co-founder and CEO of PostHog, one of the fastest growing product analytic companies. Quickly, is it apparent to you as a leader in the company that this person is a 10x engineer? It's really fast. Like, I think the, so in an interview, they're likely to be asking questions about they're trying to understand what the company's struggling with and like where they can help. Like if you could throw money at a problem and solve it immediately, what would it be? But <laughs> like they're really trying to like dig into like what our headaches are. Um, and they also just want to throw themselves straight into it. I think once someone joins, the things we're looking for from people that would really impress me are step one, this person can contribute something like a feature or something really small. Like have they just basically shipped something really tiny, which is again, kind of standard in a bunch of places. The very quick follow up is, can this person decide what to work on? which is a lot harder. So then it's kind of like, you know, is this person able to work with no management, basically? Like, can this person go out, talk to users, figure out what to build and just ship it and then go through a cycle completely independently. So if like their manager and everyone else above them got hit by bus, they'd still be driving the company forward. And um, so I think the concept, what, like the analogy is like, is this person someone who is driving the car or is this someone who is a passenger? Like, are they waiting to receive stuff from other people in the company or do they just yeah. go and do things? Like, yeah. what are the things that they're doing? Is it like looking at data da dashboards or talking, like they're proactively talking to users? Like, what exactly are they doing day to day that makes yeah. you think, wow, that person is much more leveraged or high impact than this other engineer on the team? Yeah, so I think um, week one, it will be like, they'll look for, they'll, they'll talk to their team and they'll figure out like a random thing they should ship um, that's like on the list of stuff already that's very small. Um, because a standard failure mode is you try and, a very good engineer, I think will bite off something really ambitious to show off when they start. And they just get stuck in like tooling and all this kind of crap. So it's like, just get something out of the way. As soon as that happened, uh, it's then like, okay, you've got direct access to all of our support tickets and stuff. So you can see a stream of like thousands and thousands of tickets coming in. Um, you have access to our company roadmap. Like I'll run a session with them where I'll just explain our company strategy. Um, and you'll have ownership of like the product that you're working on. So for example, um, we have a team that does product analytics, one that does session replay, one that does uh, feature flags, for example. And so there's nothing stopping you. Just like, if I, yeah, you know what feature flags are, you know what the major features are. Like you have access to our product. Like just, it would be kind of something like, just think about like, well, if there are any missing feature gaps compared to like all of our competitors, like yourself, <laughs> and just build it um, would be one. Uh, like look at what users are asking for in GitHub or in support. It's almost more the fact that they don't ask permission to do this stuff. Um, yeah. And they're a little bit arrogant. Uh, I think is actually what corresponds best. It's like someone who see. So the thing that made me worry would be they ship a tiny feature and then they ship a tiny feature and a tiny feature um, because they were told to. Whereas as soon as they're like, hey, I'm thinking about building like um, like a Java, like Java SDK support for feature flags. And, was, and this is kind of going to be my approach. Like if they're asking a question like that or something, I'm like this person's going to be really good. <laughs> they come up with something themselves that they want to work on because they're asking if they should work on something like that, as opposed to I just sort of passively see some pull requests coming in yeah. from things I know someone else has decided we should work on. So yeah, this sense that they're like a partner to us or they're driving the car. Two things that really stuck out to me. One is that this idea of being proactive, not waiting for permission to go and tackle a big problem. The other thing that I thought was really interesting is the word arrogant. And I think that does actually resonate with me as well. Like I remember when I was at Meta, uh, you would occasionally have these engineers who come in and they'd look at them and say, this is all wrong. Like this is totally messed up. You're doing it all wrong. Let me fix it for you, right? And if you can back, if, if this new person comes in and they actually back it up with improving it and not just complaining about it, like that level of arrogance where they come in, maybe not arrogance, but like confidence, like, oh, this could be done way better. Yeah. I think that does correlate pretty highly with uh, being a 10x engineer. Yeah, like I think it's kind of your mentality is like as a human being, you're like evolved to comply with a group. Like you kind of have to stick yeah, with the herd exactly. of people to like stay alive or something back in the day. And I think the way that comes out of work is like you kind of follow orders by default. Um, and if you're in the habit of following orders, like you're not as valuable as if you're the one who's deciding like the direction everyone should be going in or whatever. Uh, there's another kind of interesting concept is uh, yes and versus no but as an attitude, uh, which again, I think is something that helps you work well with your team where he suggested this crazy big idea of like, hey, we want to ship this entire huge piece of like, this kind of platform thing that everything else can kind of be built on top of. And he wrote it out and he got like 30 comments that are explaining all of the ways it's not going to work. <laughs> like this is not going to work. It's too much scope. This will be broken. Don't know about performance, whatever. Um, and he just, instead of like folding because of all this feedback and just giving in or whatever, um, he basically ignored it. Um, he stayed up till three in the morning for three days in a row and just got it working. 
um, and got like the basic version out the door to demonstrate like actually, yeah, I've kind of figured out like most of the problems with this thing anyway. And it took like another six months to get it like into production. Um, but he was willing to kind of ignore quite direct feedback. You see a good idea and you say no to, you, you just list out all the problems that it's gonna have by default every time there's an interesting idea. You're gonna like screw up the company eventually because you're making it painful to, to suggest innovation. Um, so I think again, like another thing that correlates that impresses me a lot with engineers is like engineer X suggests like a totally out there idea for something we should work on. And then engineer Y encourages it. Uh, and like tries to figure out like is there a way of making this thing work and like takes it very seriously um, and like kind of recognizes that ideas are very fragile um, and we want to make it feel easy to be innovative rather than like default painful um, so that like really benefits the whole business. One thing that I feel like I'm hearing from you is that in the past 20 years increasingly the power of an engineer to ship a product has grown exponentially. You no longer need a backend engineer, a server engineer, a database engineer, a mobile engineer, and a web engineer. It's like you can do pretty much all that with one person today. And I think that trend will continue, especially with things like AI. Can you just comment on how you can adapt this to companies that are not so forward thinking? You're at Google. There's tons of process, there's tons of engineers. You probably have never talked to a user in your life, right? Like you're working on Google Cloud and you're like, you're so far away from the companies that are using the Google Cloud products. So what advice would you have for them uh, in terms of adapting this advice of talking to users? My guess of what will happen is like, there are multiple reasons working at a big company compared to a small company. Um, and like, maybe if you're Jam is like, yeah, cool, I want like lots of compensation or something um, and probably better comp, comp or whatever. Um, and like maybe less upside, but like more guaranteed comp, uh, like just keep working there. Like, I think the thing that's worked well for us is when engineers are wider and they're connected to users and they're deciding what to build, they're a lot more satisfied with their work. It's more challenging because because you're driving a car, you have to like not crash it and stuff. Like if you ship something, it's like your thing that you have built that now has like potentially thousands of users using it. It's like, you're now gonna get like users raising feedback or getting pissed off on social media or whatever. Like there's this sort of sense of responsibility, which is a lot of fun if you're at a stage in your career where you really want to push yourself. So I think if your mentality is like, I want to be like really pushed on what I'm working on. Like I wanna take full responsibility for the things I'm working on. I'd encourage you basically to quit and go work somewhere where you are able to decide what to work on. That's an interesting take. So you're saying that like structurally, if you're at Amazon or Oracle or Google, one of these, and not, not to pick on that, but, you know, if you're at a big company, structurally, it is probably harder for you to do the end-to-end -end product engineering archetype of talking to users, getting feedback, permissionless uh, development. So you're saying that they should actually seriously consider, you know, maybe jumping ship and doing something smaller because the trend will be 10, 15, 20 years from now, that will be the normal mode of operation. Like engineers have all the power and you need to be kind of uh, self-sufficient. You can't be spoon fed by a product manager what the requirements are. Yeah, and I think if you wanna get a jump on it, that's what I would do. James, this has been really insightful. Thank you for sharing. Where can people learn more about you and Post Talk? Uh, I think social media is probably best. You'll see a lot of stuff there. Uh, just like, I'm just James 46 on Twitter. Um, product for engineers uh, on Substack uh, is definitely worth uh, following. It's, we, take, we put a lot of work into it. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. This is super fun.